Hello, I'm Drew Savage from devitchu.net, and today we're diving into an HTML and CSS tutorial about hyperlinks and lists. But before we dive into that, let's quickly talk about comments first of all. So comments are essentially just notes uh, that are left to you or your team or whatever, any human that's reading the document, um, and they're not really read by whatever's sort of interpreting your document. So, for example, if the browser's going through your CSS, it isn't going to go, hey, look, a comment, let's, let's change the way we do things. Now, if we had a comment in the CSS, um, let's just say here, this isn't how you do comments, I'm just trying to express the concept to you. Uh, the body color will still be red, this comment isn't going to affect it at all. Uh, but that isn't how we write comments, so in this case it would actually sort of do things. Uh, so to write comments in CSS properly, not just doing what I just did there, we start the comment by doing a forward slash and then an asterisk, and then we end the comment by doing an asterisk and then a forward slash. So pretty simple, these are multi lines, you can go as many lines as you want, you just type anything you want in there. Um, and it will not be sort of used to style the document. The body color is still going to be red. Nothing else is really going to change. We just have a note here for any humans reading the document. Um, and so maybe you do actually want to comment on this line. Uh, so if you think perhaps you in like a month, oh no, I haven't done any HTML, CSS in a while. I've forgotten everything. Oh no, what, what does this line do? I can't remember anymore. Body color red, what does that mean? If you want to comment this for perhaps your future self, um, you think you're going to figure out what it does, you can just go ahead and do that. So you can go set the text color in the body to red. Simple. Very simple, very effective, doesn't affect the way the code runs. Uh, and very similar with the HTML, we can have comments in HTML, slightly different syntax, so you accomplish it in a different way, but essentially you open the triangular bracket, uh, then you do an exclamation mark and two hyphens, and that's to open the comment, and then to close the comment, we do two hyphens, and then close uh, an, a, tri a triangular bracket or an angle bracket. Uh, and again, anything inside here it's not going to be sort of it's not going to affect the way your code runs so here if we want to comment this line we could say a link the style sheet style.css and bam again if we just refresh this page here not changed at all the comments do not affect the way your code runs they're just for people to read so uh, anyway, to the point of this tutorial, hyperlinks and lists. Let's talk about hyperlinks first. So hyperlinks or links, you should really know what they are. If you've used the web at all, uh, you're probably familiar. Traditionally, they have sort of this blue color and an underline, and you click on them, and they take you somewhere. Simple as. So you go on google.com, you type something in. Hey, look, there are a bunch of links to different places. You click the one you want to go to, bam, you're there. So they take you to a different page or a different resource. They take you somewhere when you click them. That's essentially what a link is. Uh, and these are accomplished through HTML using the A element, or the anchor element, as it's actually called. Um, so we can create one right now. Why not? So we can just open an A tag and then make a closing A tag. And bam, we have an A element right here. Very, very simple. Uh, and any text in between these two tags is going to be what's called the anchor text, or the link text. And that's the text that when you click on it, uh, you go to the location. You can obviously have other stuff in here. You can have an image in here that's going to link the image, or you can have pretty much anything in here or style it really strangely and make sort of a, a shaped element that you can click and all of this. Uh, but to start off with, you probably want to think of it as anchor text in here. Uh, so perhaps we want the anchor text to be click me to start off with. Um, but then of course there's something missing here. Uh, how does it know where to link us to? Well, it actually does this through an attribute, which we should really specify here, and that is the href attribute. Very similar to the way the link element implements the href attribute. Uh, you just type href equals, and then the location you want to take it to when you've clicked it. So uh, in this case, we might want to have a fixed path, so http colon double slash www.devhq.net, and we can go back to our page and refresh here, and it's purple in my case because I've been to that location before, but essentially if we click that link, it would take us to devhq.net. Uh, and we can also have a relative path, so if we want to do something like uh, access a document in the same folder, so perhaps we actually want to link to style.css um, and we go back to Chrome or whatever browser you're using and we click this, it's actually going to then show us style.css, uh, so this is actually the styling we have applied to our page. Um, so that's pretty useful too, you can have fixed links or relative links. Uh, so that's really all there is to A elements in the HTML. Let's talk about A elements in the CSS a little and styling them. So obviously the first style you're going to probably want to apply is just on the general A selector. So we might want a property value pair here that perhaps sets the color. Um, so all links on the page should be, uh, I don't know, green. And let's just go back and refresh. And oh look, all links on our page are green. That was pretty simple. Um, but the thing is, 
Also, what? how do they do that thing where you hover over the link or when you, you click down on the link it changes or when you've already visited the link? How do they do that? Is that like some special JavaScript or something? Um, well, it's actually just some some pretty simple CSS actually and it uses a thing called pseudo classes. And they sound really, really scary, I know, but don't worry about it. They're not actually as scary as they sound. So first of all, since we only actually have one styling here in this rule set, uh, let's just go ahead and condense this down to one line because we're probably not going to expand that and it just makes it look a little bit neater in my opinion it's it's all personal preference, it doesn't actually matter um, but it's, I guess it's sending a couple of less bytes um, if, you, if you care about optimizations or know about optimizations like that and if you don't, don't worry about what I just said But uh, yes, yeah, pseudo classes, so there are three main pseudo classes for uh, link elements or A elements as it is uh, the hover, the active and the visited pseudo elements so hover is as you would expect when you hover over a certain link Active uh, when you clicked down and visited when you've already visited. Now, I don't like using visited very often, but uh, if you do, I'll show you how to use it in this tutorial anyway, because uh, some people do like using it, and sometimes it can genuinely be useful. So, uh, we use pseudo classes by again getting the selector we want, so in this case, we just want a and then a colon and then the name of the pseudo class, so hover in this case. So, this is now going to apply to any links that have been hovered over that are currently being hovered over. So, a hover and then we just treat that as a selector and just do whatever styling we want. So again, let's just make this a one liner because we're just going to do one styling in this case. And let's just change the color to, I don't know, a light green. Or perhaps that might be too light for the white background. Let's just change it to blue just to show you how this works. If we go back to Chrome or whatever browser you and refresh, and when we hover, hey, look, it changes color. That's damn awesome. Same thing with active. So if we just copy this here and we just say when links are being clicked down on, change the text color to pink or something uh, when we click down hey look the text color is now pink when we click down same thing for visited however visited will sort of override these ones so if the link's been visited the hover and active states uh, will not take place and neither will the general color either because visited is the more specific selector and that's the way css works so um, perhaps when they're visited we want it to just be the traditional purple refresh because I visited this thing before it's purple and now the active state the hover state they don't take effect anymore because visited sort of takes priority and goes no I'm the boss here it's damn purple um, so those are the pseudo classes or at least the main pseudo classes for the a element uh, and that's really all I have to say about uh, hyperlinks in this tutorial I mean they're ex obviously extremely useful you can link to different pages of your sites you can link to other people's sites you can do all kind of things with them uh, and of course with some more complex styling you can do some very very interesting things with them so that's all I've got to say about hyperlinks for now. In fact, maybe let's keep, let's take away the visitor style. Let's just keep a basic link on our page to uh, to remember that we covered that in this tutorial. So the next thing we're going to cover in this tutorial is lists. Now, there are a couple of different kinds of lists, but the main kinds are unordered lists and ordered lists. So uh, it probably is not going to surprise you that lists are for storing sort of list data. So perhaps you have like a shopping list kind of thing you want to display on your page, or uh, more likely there. It, it, it kind of depends what niche you're on, obviously, what kind of list data you want to have. Um, but the chances are, at some point, you're going to want to write a list. And there is a nice way to do this in HTML. So uh, first of all, the UL element is for unordered lists. And that's what UL stands for, unordered list. Um, so we've created an unordered list element. And then inside this, we make various list elements, which are actually the points of that list. So these are represented by the LI element. So we can have LI slash li, and of course we probably want some text in here, so let's just go 1, 2, 3, slash li, 4, slash li. So in this case, we have an unordered list element, which contains four list elements, which represent the different points in the list. And let's just have a look at uh, what this is styled by default by my browser. So let's refresh. Hey, look, we have one, two, three, four, and they have these nice bullet points by default. That's kind of cool, uh, because the browser just sort of, sort of styles it like that by default. Uh, so that's an unordered list. That's obviously one of the kinds of lists. Uh, in this case, uh, these pieces of data seem numbered, one, two, three, and four. Hang on a sec, they're kind of ordered. So in this case, we should probably actually make it an ordered list, which is represented by the OL element. Uh, and these also have these list elements inside to represent the different list points. So if we just literally change that, save and refresh, you can see now we have the one, two, three, four instead of the little kind of bullet points that we had before, um, because that represents that represents ordered data instead of unordered data. Um, so perhaps you want both of these in our document just for now, just to show how they work. So let's also make a UL just above 
which can perhaps have some more unrelated data. So it could be like a shopping list of milk, need some cheese, uh, I need bread, and I need some flour. We can refresh here, so now we have an unordered list with some list elements, and we have an ordered list with some list elements. And you can see by default they're styled differently, kind of as you'd expect. Um, and that's literally pretty much all there is to using them in HTML. We have the OL and UL elements, and then we have the LI elements which go inside those. Uh, and then in CSS, obviously we can style the other UL and OL selectors, uh, and also we can use the nesting. I don't know if I talked about this before, but you can actually nest things up, so if we want to target all uh, anchor elements in the body, we can go body space A. Uh, and in that case, that's kind of pointless, obviously, because all our A elements should be in the body anyway. Why would I need to specify that? Um, but in the case of this, we can say something like ULLI, and that's only going to target list elements in unordered lists. Um, and similarly, OLLI is only going to target list elements in ordered lists. So that's very useful. Um, and then, of course, we also just have the general UL selector and the general OL selector, which we can use for now. Um, so the first property, and the really important property for lists, is the list style type CSS property. And this essentially sets those little kind of bullet points. So list hyphen style hyphen type is how it's written. And then there are a whole load of values you can use for this. Uh, for unordered lists, uh, the most common ones are disks, which is what it defaults to, those sort of little round bullet points. Uh, and none, which is obviously no bullet points, and that is actually really useful for a bunch of situations. I'm going to use it later in this series to uh, make like a navigation bar and some really cool stuff. Uh, and also, I think square is super cool. So if we just show square, um, that makes the little bullet point square. Simple as. And in some designs, that looks really cool. Uh, obviously, in some, you want the circular. And it's all really just how you want it to look. And that's what CSS is all about, isn't it? So they're the main ones for unordered lists. Uh, for ordered lists, um, if we just go, oh well list style type uh, we have a bunch of different ones so by default it goes to decimal um, another really cool one I like is decimal leading zero um, if we refresh so that's going to make it 01, 02, 03, 04 which is useful in some cases uh, and of course we can just we could set this to none if we really wanted to just like that uh, and if we wanted to we could use some of the ones that are traditionally for an order list like disk and that would work just fine Obviously, if it's an ordered list, you probably don't want it to just have the regular bullet points. So these are all, when I say these ones are for an ordered list, I mean traditionally they'd be used in an ordered list because they don't represent ordering. But you can you can use it wherever you like. A property uh, value pair is a property value pair. This property can be said to any of the possible values. Uh, and a bunch of the values are shown in the related text tutorials to this video. So if you're, if you're watching on the website, that's just below. If you're watching on YouTube, they will link to that in this video's description. Um, to all those kind of different values you can use. So that really is uh, all I have to say in this tutorial. We learned how to style ULs and OLs. Um, perhaps if you want to do something here, in fact, no, we haven't learned about that. Don't worry, we'll save that for another tutorial. But we've created lists and unordered lists. Um, did we change that? Let's quickly take out that list style type disk. Let's make it a decimal leading zero. Um, but we've learned about unordered lists and ordered lists and also hyperlinks. Uh, and how to style all these things, and some of it may seem kind of not very useful right now, but we're going to learn about all the different components, and then we're going to learn how to mesh them all together, and it's all going to fit together, and it's all going to be super cool. So uh, that is the end of this tutorial. If you want to learn more about anything I've talked about in this uh, tutorial, if you're viewing on the website, the text tutorial is just below, and if you're viewing on YouTube, there'll be a link to the text tutorial, which just has some more information on everything I've talked about uh, in this video's description. So that's the end, and have a nice day.